in this video series, this documentary that we are about to approach and, and, and to enter into the world of what is real and what isn't. When you watch television, you, 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 you see stuff called reality, reality television shows. It's not real, it's fake. It is fake, fake to the bone, all the way down to the marrow. Fake is what it is. What you are about to witness, what you are about to see, is what it really, really encases and involves in what one person actually goes through on a daily basis of trials and tribulations and, 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 and everything else that may not appear to be, but is real, R-E-A-L, real. It is a, it is a factual, uh, factual non-fiction story that will give you the chills through your bones and make you grind your teeth with hatred and with disgust that TV is not real. TV is something that is only there to, to, to brainwash you and to give you the feeling that you are involved in the situation when you're not even involved at all. So sit back, enjoy this video series as we take you down the lonely, lonely road out in the middle of nowhere and tell you the truth of what it's really like to be real, not fake. We don't have producers, we don't have, we don't have directors, we don't have sound crews, we don't have camera people, we don't have nothing except what you're gonna see in front of your eyes. So sit back and watch as we take you from start to finish of what it's really like to be real. Uh, real. <laughs> yeah. uh. Sunday. Um, the sun is finally shining after about three weeks of freezing ass, extreme cold weather. Um, we got 12 inches of snow about three weeks ago, and it's just been a complete nightmare. Um, what I'm doing today on Sunday, uh, it's actually about 40 degrees out. Uh, I got my paint booth hooked up, and I'm going to be doing some painting today. Um, I got to paint these dash parts for our Camaro and there's the Camaro right there. What I got to paint is I got to paint the gauge cluster, um, the plastic gauge cluster so I can get that done. I'm going to go ahead and paint the glove box door at the same time so we can get this dash done and move down the fucking road. Now before we go any further I'm gonna let you know why I got an attitude about this car right here and this includes uh, another car over there called a Mustang. Now I'm not mad at these guys because I'm a nice guy but every time I show these cars and I tell everybody on my videos they've been here for many 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 years they start blaming me that it's my fault that these cars are here for many many years. No it's not. It is not my fucking fault. In a way, it kind of is my fault because I'm not an asshole and I didn't stick to my guns and tell them, get your shit out of my shop. I went ahead and let them park their cars in the back 
uh, for several years until they accumulated the money they needed to get the job done. And then, of course, they went to the back of the line, and I had two or three other cars to finish, and then I had another car in line. And I explained to them, if you want me to do your cards, you're going to the back of the fucking line and I'll work on your car when I have time to work on it. Because you don't have money to pay me. You don't have money for all the parts. So what is a guy like me supposed to do being a nice fucking guy that I am? And I am a nice fucking guy. I don't care what anybody says. I'll help anybody out that is walking down the fucking road. It doesn't matter who you are. So when the owner ordered this engine and transmission, it was right in the middle of that bullshit cold virus called COVID. When everything was on hold, you couldn't get nothing. It took us a fucking year to get an engine for this car after he finally ordered it. And we had three deliveries. Finally, the third one, we got an engine. The transmission finally showed up. But then on the other hand, we couldn't put the motor tranny in because we couldn't get the clutch parts that we needed and the bell housing. It took almost two years to get all the shit just to get the fucking drivetrain in the car so we can wire it up. So as you see, this is not my situation. Now, I don't mind building turnkey cars for people. I kind of like building turnkey cars. I like wiring the car up. I like installing the motors and transmissions. I like to get it all together from start to finish, from junkyard material to uh, concourse restoration situation. But the problem is I'm by myself and I am getting stressed out. I want these cars out of my shop. I am not working on them in between jobs any fucking more. It is, it's over. I am losing money on this. If I would have stuck to my guns from the very beginning, this car would not be in my shop. It'd be in some storage unit out in Louisville, Texas. And the owner probably would have lost it because he's in the UK. So it kind of put me in a position to say, okay, I can be an asshole and tell this guy 10,000, 15,000 miles away to go fuck off. Or I could be a nice guy and help the motherfucker out. And then this shows up. Then this situation comes to arise. And this is basically a mirror image story of the Camaro. I don't have any money. We're going to have to put it on hold. Can you store it in your back until I get money? Yes, but you'll go to the end of the line. I will work on your car only in between other paying jobs. I have lost business because of these two fucking cars. I have lost business. These cars are from seven, eight years ago that these should have been done and gone. And I am losing fucking money working on them. I know that's kind of hard to explain and you're sitting there going, how are you losing money? That doesn't make sense. I'm not going to sit here for six hours and give you the small business fucking explanation of, of gratitude and attitude of why I'm losing money working on these fucking two cars. Besides working on these two cars and losing money, I am losing life and time of my life. Why am I saying that? You're laughing. Because I don't do anything. I can't go anywhere. I'm working seven fucking days a week to get this shit out of my fucking shop. Plain and simple. Yes, a tief in einer Bar Mitten in der Wüste Lässig stand sie da Die Männer sahen ihre Brüste Yes, a tief in einer Bar Yes, Senorita So 
So today is Sunday, and I am hoping that it's going to be warm enough for me to paint. Now, I've had my heater going. Um, I use a propane heater out here in Moab, Utah. That's one thing that sucks out here, is if you want to paint a car, you better know what the fuck you're doing, because you can screw a paint job up that fucking fast in this type of weather. Another thing out here in Moab that I've never had to do in Dallas is I got to use fisheye eliminator in my epoxy primer. I don't understand why, I don't know what the concept is of that, but if I don't use fisheye eliminator in my epoxy primer, then it, it, I don't know what it is. It goes south. So like I said, there's a lot of different angles of what to do and how to do it uh, from where I'm at now and where I used to be. But uh, like I said, I just took that off. What the fuck? I'm using this. I'm using this touch-up gun. But like I said, I'm in the middle of painting this. And what I'm doing right now is I'm going to go out there and apply the epoxy primer so I can get these painted on Sunday. I can't work on my stuff. I can't do anything I want to do. I can't go drive into the snowy mountains or take an offer from a friend that said, let's go ride our sled, my sleds out in the LaSalle mountains. I can't do that. What is a sled? A snowmobile. Because I have to get this fucking shit done and out of my shop. It's fucking bullshit. And is it ever going to come down? Probably fucking not. All right, probably not. That's basically the answer to the question. I'm just trying to clarify and let you know that these cars that are here and have been here forever is not my fucking fault. Okay, not my fault at all. Just to let you know. talking to yourself right now and you're saying to yourself why is that ruining your day if that's all you're going to do all day that'll only take 15 20 minutes to paint that little shit no it fucking doesn't you're wrong that's going to take two to three hours of dicking around maybe longer because i gotta let the shit dry in between coats does that make any sense it's going to take half a fucking day to paint those two little fucking pieces and that's part of the job that ain't extra um, a lot of people out there would basically say, fuck that shit, tell them to come get their cars, fuck off. I mean, you know, let's do it, let's look at it in this angle. So here I am working on these cars, and I've already told these guys this, that I'm not charging them labor rates from eight years ago, but it really doesn't matter. Because when you have a car in your possession for so long, you kind of start losing track of what the fuck you should charge him, how much this was, and, and is this worth charging him for that, and should I charge him extra for this, and then by the time you get all done, you start getting the attitude, I don't give a fuck, I want it out of here. Now, the story that I got on that Mustang right there, when I got it, um, he actually took it to another shop up in New Jersey or New York, and he gave him $10,000 to restore the car, and the car never did get restored. Um, 
They basically stripped it down to bare metal, gutted it out, took all his parts, sold most of his fucking parts, and put his car out in the back. When I got this piece of shit, it was a rotted, junker pile of crap that you would not believe uh, it would have been restored. You would have not believed it. But I went ahead and did it because the car was already at my shop. And I didn't know that it was going to take the guy seven years or five or five years to get all this money together to finish it out. So now we're working on it and it's getting done. And has anybody ever heard of Alcoholics Anonymous? AA? Their motto is one day at a time. Well, that's how it is on these fucking cars that I got here. One day at a time. Get as much as I can done, and then the next day I wake up, yesterday was the past, tomorrow's the future, all we're doing is working on this bitch, and it's, it's today. That's it. It's a new situation and a new start. I bought this paint for this car three fucking years ago. You fucking believe that? Three fucking years is when I bought this fucking red paint for this fucking Camaro. Same on that Mustang. Same thing. Now, don't get me wrong, because I'm going to tell you something. All right, since I've been in Moab at my shop, I have restored five cars. And I've only been here two and a half years, full time. So I've restored five full cars, and that's in between doing these fucking things. So, yeah, I know what I'm doing, and... You know, when you got the money and it said, let's go, 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 that's fine, let's do it. But I'll be damned if I am going to pull this kind of shit and be Mr. Nice Guy again. It's not going to fucking happen. I can't do it. I can't fucking do it. I can't afford it. Um, I'm old. I'm an old man. A lot of guys call me old school which I don't give a fuck, because there, there isn't any old school or new school in paint and body, I hate to tell you that. It's all the same. You fix the dent, you prime it, you block sand it, you paint it. Well, I mean, show me the new concept of how to do paint and body work, besides buying a fucking $6,000 fucking spray gun that you don't need. Go ahead and show me. Do it! I gotta get to work. I'll talk to you later. Do me a square deal. Stick around. We're not done. Stick around. Yes, a tief in einer Bar. Mitten in der Wüste. Lässig stand sie da. Die Männer sahen ihre Brüste. Yes, a tief in einer Bar. Senorita I finally got everything painted, as you can see. Um, <laughs> everything that needed painted. Uh, let's go out there and look what took almost a little over a half a day to do. And see what we got. So if we look right there, you can see that's a done deal. And they came out really, really nice. I'm really happy with them. And they're gonna look good in the car. So that's just one more thing down the road. One more situation done that I can mark off the list on the 1967 Camaro that has been here for a very, very long time. If you ever get yourself in this position, and I'm a nice guy, okay? I'm a nice guy. But if you ever get yourself in this position, think before you react. If it's going to put you in a bind and it's going to put you out and, and it's going to make you lose business, the best thing to do is let it go. 
I know it sounds cruel and mean, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get it out the door. Did I make a mistake by keeping this vehicle and working on it and helping this guy out? I don't think I made a mistake doing it. I think I'm losing a lot of money and a lot of business by doing it. But as far as making a mistake by doing it and helping him out, and the same goes for this right here, I don't think I made a mistake. I'm glad I helped these guys out. I'm glad that they were able to get their shit together finally and do what they had to do to get it done. Even though I'm losing my ass and I don't care what anybody says, it's not my fault. Because you know there's going to be commentators out there that are going to tell me this and I should have done that and if you didn't want to do this then you should have done that. And I already know the whole story, okay? I already know everything. We don't need to leave comments like that. It's a done deal. The cars are here. I'm working on them by myself and getting them done ASAP. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, telling you the life and trials and tribulations of what it is trying to run a small business working on cars and losing your fucking ass.